You've heard about the Google page experience algorithm, but how do you optimize it? Because Google doesn't really reveal that much information about the algorithm updates. And if you want to rank at the top, you have to, in essence, please their algorithm as well as pleasing users as well. Hey everyone, I'm Neil Patel, and today I'm going to share with you on how you can optimize for the page experience algorithm. Now, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. Now, first off, if you want to optimize for the page experience algorithm, you got to know what it's all about. In essence, what Google's trying to do is they're trying to tell you as a user or as a webmaster and a site owner and a marketer that, hey, you can't just optimize for them. You got to also put optimize for the user. In essence, you got to put the user first. If you put the user first and you provide them with the best experience, Google wants to rank you higher in the long run because it benefits the user, which pleases them. And if the users are happy when they're using Google, what are they going to do? They're going to keep coming back. They're going to use Google more and maybe even click on some ads, which helps Google generate more revenue. So first off, if you want to optimize for the user, you got to run usability tests on your website and you can easily do this through crazy egg. So once you sign up for crazy egg, you'd want to log into your dashboard and click create new snapshot. And you can do multiple snapshots or one snapshot. Uh, for this scenario, I'm going to click on multiple snapshots. We're going to do my homepage and let's call this a homepage. And I'm going to end up doing my main blog page. Let's do blog. And then I'm going to even do a blog article like, let's say neilpatel.com, how now let's do how to start a blog. All right. So we got three going here and I'm going to click next, which will take me to settings, create three snapshots separate on each device. Yes. Mobile desktop, enable those snapshot immediately uh, and snapshot 60 days or 2,500 visits review pretty much good to go. Create the nine snapshots. Great. Yay. Return to my dashboard. And it takes some time for data to load. Um, if you haven't installed the crazy egg script, it's like a JavaScript, like Google analytics, you got to do that. I'm pretty much good to go. So I don't have to worry about that and I already have heat maps that are done. So I'm going to end up showing you some of them so you can see what it's like. So first off, here's the example of a blog post, and this is for desktop devices. As you can see, it draws a line telling you where the majority of the fold is and what people are looking at. If you look at majority of the attention, yeah, they're getting a lot of attention here. Like these images are getting popularity, 97%, 20,000 impressions. And as you scroll down, typically you're going to get less and less attention. Uh, where the meat is, where the content is, or where the valuable stuff is, you'll tend to get more attention. And obviously, as you scroll more and more down, you're going to get less attention. And the reason being is not everyone's going to read all the content or even scroll on your page if it's a service page or product page or whatever it may be. The overall purpose of doing this is you can see where people are getting stuck, where they're not. Um, the big thing that I learned from this, and I'll scroll all the way down at first so you can just see how it looks, right? Even the comment section. The first thing that I noticed is if you want to leave a comment, you got to keep scrolling down. So one change, because a lot of people are clicking the comment box, one change that I'm considering doing to make the experience better for people who want to leave comments is put the comment box higher up and make it really easy for people to leave a comment or read the comments. So that way they don't have to scroll all the way down to leave a comment. Another thing that you'll notice is no one really clicks on the footer. Um, but if I scroll all the way back up, there's not a lot of clicks happening here. And that makes sense. Um, I got this stock photography image that's not providing a lot of value. So one thing I'm considering doing is bringing the text higher up. Cause if you look at the attention, I'm losing people right? It's going from 83 to 85, 88, 85, and then it just starts going down. But then the attention starts going back up to 85, 85. It's because that's where the text is. So one thing I'm going to consider testing to try to improve the experience, because this image here doesn't really provide any value, is to move my text higher up on the page, which can help with the popularity. Because as you can see here, 
mouse movements and the attention of users aren't really here. Users want to get to the text, the meat, the potatoes. So I'm going to start making tests where I move this to try to improve my experience. Another thing that you can see here by the heat map and the colors, no one's really clicking on the side from the navigational items to the tools to the little ads. Sure, some people are clicking on this search area, so I may leave this, but majority of these navigational elements and these sidebar areas aren't really getting clicked. So one thing that I'm considering testing is removing the ones that aren't getting that clicked. So that way it draws more attention to the content, which is why people originally came to my site as well. Same with the navigational elements. If you look here, the blog is clicked on heavily about tool services, not so much. So I may consider adjusting my navigation to improve the experience as well. Now let's go on to the next e map. This one's a little bit different. This is of uh, my homepage on a mobile device and I have a lot of clicks on the main call to action. Um, but what's interesting here is people are actually clicking on, so I'm gonna adjust the brightness here. So you can adjust the brightness so it's a little bit more clear for you guys. So people are actually clicking on these images. These images aren't clickable. They don't do anything. So what I'm gonna either do is change the images up uh, and have them explain the message overall more and make it so that when you click on it, it does something or just remove the images altogether. So my main two options are gonna be people are clicking on images when they're not supposed to. So you either need to change the images to describe what they are and make it clear that they're not clickable, but that probably isn't gonna to help too much. So the main things I can probably do is either A, make the images clickable and it could take people more in depth on what they're gonna learn or allow them to register for whatever I'm pitching or selling or just remove the images so that way I'm not wasting people clicking on stuff that doesn't really matter and hopefully I can get them to click on the stuff that does matter like getting them to claim their spot or register. Now if I look at the next one, here is uh, my homepage on desktop device and as you can see the clicks are a lot better, they're not clicking on stuff they shouldn't. Sure you're seeing some clicks on text but a lot of times people click when they're reading, that's natural. I wouldn't change too much up here. Um, if I did change one thing, it would be adding a navigation to the top. So in the footer, if you look here, a lot of heavy navigational clicks. Look at that bright red. And that's because there's no navigation on the top. I'm making people go through this, all this flow, which isn't as usable versus putting the navigation on the bottom or more. So I mean, put it at the top, right? Instead of just putting it at the bottom. And then if I look here, this is my main blog page and this is on mobile. People are clicking, they're clicking and it shows them, you know, all my blog articles. And as you can see, there's not much attention as you keep scrolling down. I don't really have pagination on my blog and I do like that constant loading as you keep scrolling and scrolling. But with mobile devices, no one's going to keep going all this far. It's very rare. So what I'm considering doing is I'm considering making it shorter and having pagination at the bottom because I think that'll improve experience. But what's very popular is I have this little area on my mobile device that works extremely well. And I do this on desktop that you should consider copying with your blog. And it says, I want to learn about, and it says everything. I'm going to actually brighten it up here so you can see. You click the drop down, and it tells you all the categories I have for my blog. And then the content is then relevant to those categories. So people then can click on the post that they want to that's most relevant to their interests. So they don't have to keep reading or scrolling more so to find what they're looking for. And I do a similar thing on my desktop uh, devices on my main blog page. I have a little bit different of a header, uh, but the same thing, if you look at one of the most clicked areas, more than right here is I want to learn about everything. And then they drop down and they can go and fine tune the content, look at what they really are interested in. So what's really interesting that I ended up learning from this, uh, this helped me generate more leads and also create a good experience for people because at neilpatel.com, we also offer consulting services. So I changed the part right here where it says, I wanna learn about everything to, do you want me to do your marketing for you? If you click yes, it takes you to the consulting page. If you click no, I'd rather do it myself. It then goes to that box where it says, what do you wanna learn? I wanna learn about, and then they can select what they wanna learn about. So if they click email marketing, 
the content then adjusts to email marketing. If they decide they want to learn about e-commerce, the content then adjusts to e-commerce. So that's something that I got from running a crazy egg test. Now the whole purpose of showing you this is although no one knows exactly what's in the page experience algorithm, what Google's trying to do is just make websites and webmasters and marketers and business owners think more about the user experience because they want to rank pages at the top that are also the best for users. So you can use Crazy Egg to then go and adjust and tweak. Uh, that's what I do it for and just want to show you how I'm using it to maximize my user experience so that way I can rank the best in the long term, which hopefully will make it so I don't have to build as many links, write as much content to get all that traffic as well. If you have any questions about optimizing your user experience, leave a comment below. If you have any questions, again, you can just ask me and I'll try to help you out, whether it's on SEO or anything else. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, tell the people about it. Thank you for watching.